John Pedro here with mobilehomeinvesting.net. And in this video, I want to talk to you about title issues, title problems, title concerns, missing titles. You're not talking to the right owner. Uh, there's some issue. So either you're dealing with this now or you're a mobile home investor that wants to say, you know what? I'm going to deal with title issues. That's just kind of, it comes with the, with the territory. What do I do? I want to have all my ducks in a row prepared. So right now I'm going to flash up uh, on the screen. You'll see state by state uh, with the state name and then phone numbers for the actual mobile home titling departments in your area. There's also a section in there for, you know, is it the DMV, is it the town clerk, the appraiser's office? Who are you going to talk to to transfer over title in your state or transfer over ownership if your state doesn't use titles? So go ahead and pause the screen, write down those phone numbers um, because we're going to go ahead and be calling them. I'm going to tell you why in just a little bit. Now, the graph that you can see behind me, there's typically three I'll say four. There's typically three problems, major problems, that most times if there's like title issues uh, that you're going to be having. So I'm going to write a T and an O in all of these boxes. Now before I get into real quickly what those are, I want to go ahead and put an L right here with a check mark and then also taxes with a check mark. Now, if taxes are not current and there are liens on the property, those could be issues in and of themselves. Now, I want you to call the state, call the numbers that you had, tell them that you're a private buyer buying from a private seller, a mobile home inside of a mobile home park, and you want to make sure you want to provide the vehicle identification number and serial number. You're going to get that from, from, from the owners or from the title. You're going to identify that mobile home. Tell it to the state clerk and say, I just want to make sure that the owner is who they say they are. I want to make sure that there's no liens on the property. And I want to make sure that all the taxes have been paid for this year and, you know, going back. I just don't want to walk into anything that I'm not expecting. I'm trying to get all my ducks in a row. So when you explain that to the clerk, they're going to be very helpful. And they'll say, okay, what's the serial number, the VIN number? Let me type it in. Okay, you're good to go. You're not good to go. If you have any questions with liens or, t or taxes, I don't cover that in this video. Other videos I do, but you can also email me or comment below this video any questions that you may have. So the T stands for title. The O stands for that you're talking to the actual owner of the home. Now, when I say owner, I mean the owner that's on the title. The owner or the person that's in the home, I'm going to call them a resident because they're living in the home. Now, they may have paid the person who they bought it from $5,000, $10,000 cash, or maybe they're making payments. But the, until you get the title put into the new person's name, the resident living in the mobile home, they're not the owner of record. Okay, so now that we got that understanding, there's titles and there's the owners. So if you deal with this first situation where the title, or let me tell you, the, the owner rather, the owner is the name on the title. Okay, they have the title present, it's presently there, and the owner is who they say they are. You've seen their ID, and that's the person on the title. Really, with this situation, there's no liens, taxes are current, you're good to go. You gotta check out the park, make sure all the numbers work, make sure this is a home you want, obviously, and repairs, but this is good. Title's in check, ownership, the owner is who they say they are, they're on title, good job for them, you're good to go. Now, the next situation is where the title is in hand, the title is physically there, but the owner isn't the one on title. They may have gotten lazy, they procrastinated, they didn't have the money, they didn't even know that they had to change the title from the person they bought it from, the real owner, over into their names. So they're not currently the owners, all right? The next situation you can go to is where the owners are who they say they are. The owners are the ones, you know, on title, but they just don't have a copy of the title. They don't have a duplicate title. It was lost or it was misplaced. So the owner is who they say they are. They don't currently have a physical copy of the title for some reason. Uh, and again, in all these situations, liens, there's no liens. Uh, taxes, taxes are paid and are current. And then in this last situation, you, the old person who you're talking to, the seller, they do not currently have uh, the title. Okay, so they don't have physical title. And they're not even the ones on the title. They're like, they, their name shows up nowhere. So go ahead and click on one of these... Uh, rectangles right here and you can actually fast forward to the section of this video where you're going to learn about how to what to do in this particular situation so if you're still watching this video you're probably just here for kind of a fact finding information so that you can now learn more about these moving forward so, and you are going to see these and it's not a question of if it's a question of when you're going to see these so it's important to know 
not just for your own reason you know, of what to do moving forward, but also to give your seller clarity. You say, listen, as an investor, I'm the one-stop shop. I know just what to do, and we're going to get through this together is the way that you want to talk to your sellers because ultimately that's you know, why they want to work with you because we are the, the mobile home experts in our area. So let's talk about all these. If the title is present, means they're a physical copy of the title that they're looking at, you can hold it. It is for the right mobile home. There's two titles if it's a double wide, three titles if it's a, tri a triple wide, one title if it's a, a single wide. So the title is in hand, but the owner isn't the one on the title. You see it says like Mr. Mr. Smith as the, the one who is the owner on the title, but you're talking to now Mr. Ram Ramirez. Okay, so Mr. M Ramirez didn't put in, uh, didn't transfer over the title when they bought it. Now that could be for a number of reasons. However, with this particular situation, let's go ahead and talk about what to do moving forward. So this one is a little complex because depending on the physical title, let me draw this out, I hope you can see over here, at the bottom or sometimes on the back, they'll be where the buyer signs and where the seller signs, and also a date. But the date's kind of inconsequential. You'll just pay a fee if it's too, if the date's like a year ago or a month ago. It doesn't negate anything. It just most states want you to transfer over title within about 30 days or there's, there's just a small penalty, a small fee, but nothing to make or break the deal. So on the title itself, does the buyer, is, did, did, did the buyer sign? Did this person who did not get the title transferred over into their name, they have a copy of the title that they got from the seller, but their name is not currently on the title. So if the buyer signed, but the seller did not, oh no, if the seller, in most cases the seller will, will always sign, they're the person who this person is, buy, is buying it from, but if the buyer signed, that means that you have a fully executed title. The buyer signed, the seller signed, it's dated, you can fill in all the other information, the sales price, the location, all that. But as long as the seller signed and the buyer signed, you have an executable title. You can bring that now to the Department of Motor Vehicle, Department of Transportation, the county clerk, depending on where in your state you transfer over title. Your, this resident right here, who's not the owner yet, they can bring the title and they can show their ID. They're the buyers. And the sellers have already signed, they don't need to be there, but the buyers do, and it'll go into their name. So realize the title in this situation, it's going from the original owner to the buyer, who's the resident. Now it's going from the resident to you as the investor or as the buyer. So that's how the state wants it to go. They want it to go from A to B to C. There is a way where you can cut out B and move it to C. However, the state doesn't want that, doesn't want you to do that. Now you can do that and most likely you're going to get away with it. And I bring it up in this video because that's real life and it could happen and you may decide that you want to do that and it's like a victimless crime. But I just want you to know that, you know, you probably will get away with it. The state won't want it that you to do that. But, you know, if how you can do that, how you can cut out the person in the home, the resident, okay, is by saying with this same situation, the title is accounted for, but the owner, they bought the home, but they didn't, they didn't get the title switched over. That would look like this. If the seller had signed, because the seller has to sign the title, or you have to get the seller to sign the title. So the seller, bottom line, always has to be signed. The buyer's line, maybe that's blank. Maybe when this resident bought the home, they never put their name in there. So it's just a blank right on the buyer's line, on the purchaser's line. It's, it's blank. So you can go ahead and fill in Mr. Investor, Mrs. Investor, a trust name, a corporate name. And you can transfer now. Now, even though the resident has lived in this home, the resident paid taxes, the resident paid the uh, original seller money, you can go ahead and title them Kind of, you can title around them. You can go from the, per, the current title's ownership, which is going to be party A, the original owner. You can skip past the resident, and as long as you pay the resident whatever money you've agreed to, then the title will go from the original owner, oops, excuse me, uh, to, over to you, over to your trust, or over to your LLC. And I bring that up not because it's the right thing to do, the state doesn't want you to do that, but it is possible um, to do it. So I hope that that made sense. If you have any questions, you know, comment them below, email me personally. Let's go on to the next situation where you don't have the title, but the owner is who they say they are. So the owner is the one on title. You know, you call up the state, you say, 
you know, hello, I have the VIN number to a mobile home, I have the serial number, and I'm a private buyer just buying from a private seller in a mobile home in a park. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, all my decks were in a row and that, you know, there were no liens on the home that I was, you know, that I wouldn't be expecting because there's no title search with the mobile home uh, in a park in most states. Some states there are, but most states there are not. Uh, and also I want to make sure that taxes have been paid. I don't want to buy this home and then the seller leave and now I'm stuck with like three years back taxes. So can you tell me that over the phone? And states will, of course, tell you that information over the phone. They'll probably even tell you who is owned by. You know, you can say, well, I'm dealing, dealing with the Mr. Smith. Uh, is that the right owner? And they'll say, okay, yeah, I'm showing that Joe Smith is, is, is the owner. So when you call the state, you verify that the owner is who they say they are. You can ask that state, listen, the, the owner doesn't have title. You know, who, uh, what can we do about that? And there's going to be a state form that you can probably print off online or come into the office and grab, and there'll be a small fee. Even if the owner is maybe bedridden or in prison, you can still go ahead and get a duplicate title. The states have made this very easy. It's very similar to like a car or an automobile title. So this is actually really simple, this situation here. You just go ahead and get a duplicate title. All right, so very simple with that. Uh, and then the last situation is probably the most complex where there's no title to speak of around. I mean, it has a title, but it's with the state or you know, it just needs to be printed off. It was lost somewhere along the way. And then the owner, the person who you have in the home, they're not the owner on record. There may be a few people removed from it. Maybe they, they bought it from a friend who bought it from a friend and another friend. And then originally, like, the guy had the title. But four people ago, like, that title was, was, was gone. So there's no way of you, you even finding the owner. So if that's the case, what most likely will happen is that this transfer and sale process has been going on for a couple different times. And it was used in what's been used to convey ownership is a bill of sale which is basically a receipt for the transaction. Now that bill of sale, although good, although it does show that yes, you paid, you know, you paid Mr. Smith uh, 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 10,000 bucks to buy this home, Mr. Smith was never really the owner. Yes, you maybe can show him chains of bill of sale if you had them, which I don't think anybody would like take all those bills of sale. That way you could prove the actual chain of ownership. Long story short is if you buy a home with a bill of sale or sell a home with a bill of sale, you've not really bought anything. You've not really sold anything because you were never the owner. You were never talking to the owner that had that right. So in theory, if the owner, Mr. Smith, he was in a coma for the past five years, he comes out of his coma and he says, okay, I'm moving back to my home. And lo and behold, now you're in the home. And now that probably wouldn't happen because the park manager is there to say, yes, you know, I've, I've been in this park now for 10 years or 44 years and you know the person in that home is always paid on time they paid the taxes so there'll be a this this gray area where they're not the real owner and they can't really sell it but they do and people pay money for it so there is still a value there and the point I want to make is as a real estate investor you're going to be talking to sellers owner, well not owners, residents that want to sell you a mobile home with a bill of sale only. Be aware that yes, there's value to create here. Yes, you can probably still do something, but it's not going to be exactly state kosher. Um, and there's definitely things to watch out for. So no liens on the property, always within some reason, but for this particular video, no liens on the property. Taxes are paid and current, even if there's no owner and no title. Taxes still have to be current. You can still call the state and say, hey, I'm calling about this particular home. Now, if you don't know the VIN number or serial number, you can sometimes give the location of the mobile home, and you also want to go ahead and try to find the data plate on the mobile home, which will be a uh, small piece of paper. Sometimes it's a metal sheet, uh, and it just tells all the pertinent information about the home, when it was created, the make, the model, wind zones, floods, uh, you know, different uh, specs about the home, the dimensions, all that good stuff. That can be found usually where the hot water heater is or where the furnace is in the master bedroom closet, sometimes in the kitchen cabinets or in the pantry, and you're just going to see it on the wall. It might be gone because it's like glued to a piece of paneling, which could have eventually been paneled over, dry painted over, drywalled over. So if you don't have the vehicle or serial or VIN number, then you want to go ahead and try to determine if the taxes have been paid as best you can talking with the state. Now keep in mind the state is going to say don't buy this home because you don't have ownership. Let's go ahead and talk about that. So the owner, if you verify with the park that the person that's selling the home, the resident in the home, 
is the one that's been making the payments for the last one or two years, it's probably okay to think that the real owner isn't going to come back anytime soon. Now, there's no title, so most of the time you can kind of just disregard that because if you don't have the owner, you don't know who the owner is, you can't find the owner, you're probably not going to get a duplicate title. So this person in here, they can sell you a bill of sale. When you buy this home, it has to be purchased conservatively. You have to basically buy this home knowing that if the stuff hits the fan, you can go ahead and just kind of wipe your hands away from this deal. Now I say this to you knowing full well and being in, being in this situation that you can still create value. You want to disclose everything just like the normal honest reputable investor that you are. You want to disclose repairs, if there were anybody was murdered in the home, you know that has never really happened but just kind of came to mind. And you also want to of course disclose, hey guess what? I'm going to sell you this with a bill of sale. Something happened and we don't currently have title to the home, but the terms that I mentioned, the price of the home, that is with a bill of sale. Now you can verify with the park manager that, you know, obviously we've, we've been here for a number of years and, you know, we have controlled the property, but we don't have title. We won't be selling you title. We will be selling you a bill of sale. Again, the taxes have to still be current. They can still be paid, but just realize that this scenario right here is a gray area. Depending on who you talk to, they'll say stay away. And a lot of times, you know, it's probably best to stay away. But if the numbers work out, if the home works out, if the seller is motivated to sell and there's something that we can do in here. And again, we want to disclose everything to our buyers, the person who you're reselling to, even though you don't really have ownership to resell it. Uh, this is something that we can create value, we can help a seller, we can help a buyer. Uh, so I really hope that that made sense, the fact that that is a gray area and it's not kosher with the state, but there is some value to be made there, um, but it's definitely something that has to be done uh, very carefully, and if, in, if you even want to take on you know, this kind of situation right here, which again, as mobile home investors, you know, we are one-stop shop. We do tackle problems. We obviously do try to get the title when possible. We do try to track down the owner as possible. Alternatively, you want to try to work with park management. Let them know that the title is missing and that the owner is not present. A mobile home park is able to file for abandonment of a mobile home. Now, this would mean that the home would obviously be abandoned, but you'd have to get that worked out with the park management to say, you know, could we do this so that you could get title? It would now be in your name as the park, and then you could go ahead and sell it to me. I would pay for that abandonment cost. Uh, that way you would have title. It would take par the park a little bit of time and effort, uh, but as long as they would mind doing that to you, then everything would be on the up and up. Even in all these situations, um, there is a way to move forward. You know, oftentimes, uh, as mobile home investors, as real estate investors, we have to jump over hurdles. A lot of the best deals I've gotten are ones where there's been more hurdles. And other people that have tried to buy these homes, they stop, they quit, they fail, they get scared. They don't know what to do. They don't make a few extra phone calls. So I hope that that all made sense. Uh, I hope that you got some value with that um, state by state kind of phone number and where you're going to go ahead and title those. I hope that all of this uh, makes a little bit more clarity in your brain or makes sense rather. Hmm, need some water. If you have any questions or concerns about any of this, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can comment below or email me personally at john at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Talk soon.